no way it's actually going to be good because we're talking about Netflix like there's no way they'll actually let Christians talk about real controversial topics but then again maybe this is their way for apologizing for putting cuties on their platform which to this day they still have not taken down you know what I'm actually I'm gonna give this film a benefit of a doubt so without further ado ladies and gents let's dive into checking out a week away we start out by meeting our main character, Will, who apparently is a gangsta, not in a good way. Look at this dude, running from the police with his guitar. Like, who, do, who does he think he is? I mean, I know he lives in Nashville, but does, like, does he seriously think like he's some street musician who's... What is he even running from them for? You stole a cop car. Oh. Oh, you, bruh, how stupid is that? You stole a police car? So Eggman is chasing this guy down and uh, manages to catch him, uh, proceeds to berate him. How dare you steal cop cars, young man? This is your last straw. Yeah, I got that just for this video. So apparently Will's been in trouble for a while. He's been going in and out of foster homes. Six years, seven schools, 22 homes. That's got to be some kind of a record, and not one to be proud of. His parents died when he was a kid. It almost feels like your cliche Christian movie, but I don't want to like make jest of that. That's really sad. It's just I think in Christian movies, like it's not a Christian movie unless somebody dies. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I just did. But uh, basically, he's been in and out of trouble for a long time, and at this point, he's caused so much trouble. His last option is to go to juvenile detention. I'm sorry, Will, but you, you kind of brought this on yourself. You're smart. Talented. Hey, I'll change. You're gonna stop being smart and talented? Well, I think you already did that a little while ago. But luckily for Will, there's actually one other option. There is at least one more family in this world that's willing to take Will in under one condition. Will, I was discussing it with Mark, and we would be so excited if you would join us this year. Where? You are going to summer camp. How is that a good idea? You're sending like a straight up gangster, like this kid who's been in trouble with the law, and, and you're gonna send him to a church camp with all these innocent young Christian kids. I also love how excited George is to meet some guy who basically to him is just like a criminal off the streets. Yes, and I'm so, so totally excited, man. You play guitar, we're gonna we're gonna rock the talent show, plus there's like well, yay, Will is somewhere to go now. Awesome. He starts singing a song out of the blue, which is like the weird thing that gets me about musicals because I feel like they're kind of unrealistic. Some people love musicals. I've never been into musicals. It, people just like singing all the time about everything. It's just so random. And it's like so unrealistic, I promise. He starts singing and then on and off, there's like five minutes straight of just singing. And now for an episode of... Musicals in a nutshell. The other day I was in the bathroom trying to brush my teeth. Oh yeah, as soon as I was done, you know I had to stop. Take a sip of my drink. Next, I was in my neighborhood, walking down the street, singing in broad public. My neighbors are gonna think I'm a creep. So Will finally arrives at church camp where everyone is totally normally just dancing around. All of a sudden, he sees something he never expected. going to camp meant he'd be able to to meet girls apparently that didn't enter his mind now i'm pretty sure he's happy that he's here this is the great adventure hi hi i'm um avery well do, do, you, do you greet everybody that intimately when you first meet them 
Wow. Him and Avery throughout the rest of the film become very close friends. Well, obviously you could figure out where it's gonna go out of your cliche knowledge of musicals. I mean, there's no way they would fall in love. I'm just warning you, Avery, you gotta watch out for this guy. Is this real? He tried to sell his high school on Craigslist? Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's actually a low-key marketing genius. I would hire him. George proceeds to show Will the cabin that they'll be staying at and then also grills him because he, he lied and told people that they were related. By the way, what was that back there, man? The whole family slash cousins thing? Like, I, I, I don't mean to be a prude, but I... It, lying's kind of up there on the top 10 thou shalt nots. I mean, they look exactly alike. Like that. If, if you guys can't see it, like... Stop it. Get some help. I just love the fact that George is doing this all holier than thou thing. Oh, it's so bad to lie! And, and the, the next scene. Um, uh, you, well, you know, we're cousins for the summer, I and I was, um, we, uh, he, he, he's my cousin, um, and we're here, cool. and it's the summer. Uh, You're such a saint, George. Isn't, isn't, there's probably a saint George somewhere. Probably. But, but, but at least give some grace to George, because he's legit struggling. He's had a crush on this girl, Presley, since, like, he was in diapers, and he just hasn't been able to work up the courage to talk to her. I can relate with that. I literally had a crush on a girl, like, at one point for, like, six years, and I never talked to her, and I was like, Presley, you're an idiot. You're not brave right now. Presley could have any guy she wants. I, I, trust me, all right? I tried last year. I wrote her a letter every single day. I didn't ever send them. Oh, well, maybe you should invest in some stamps. Yeah, I think you should just walk up to her and get them to her all at once. She'll either want to marry you on the spot or she'll never talk to you again. But either way, you know, you'll be able to move on or move forward. Hey, <laughs> So we've already met the main villain of this film in a previous scene, but he kind of chats with Will a little bit more in this scene. His name is Sean. He apparently saves narwhals for a, a side job. Like, how do you even save a narwhal? Uh, you see, the thing is, I'm not sure I'm brave enough to pull off one of those t-shirts in public, so I'm gonna have to pass. Oh. Oh, that's a shame, because I actually sell these t-shirts to raise money for a cause that's close to my heart. I think that's him on there, on a narwhal. This is what, to me, kind of seems like a shortcoming of the film, is that Sean is actually a kind of likable person. He's not really a bad character. He's kind of a jerk later on in the film, but, like, he's actually friendly and... That's all, I, I mean, that's all I can say. Maybe they don't need a bad guy for this film. I like films with bad guys. I like films with like really bad guys that are just pure evil. Because they remind me of myself. Wait, what? I didn't say that. So the whole camp gathers around the campfire, introduce the three teams. Let's see if I can remember them. The Azure Apostles, Crimson Angels, and the, the Veritas Maximus. I think I got it. So they're all introducing and initiating all the new people into the teams while the teams sing their chants. I don't know why they can't just walk up because it's a musical. They have to sing. Why can't they just walk up to the front and they'll be like, hey, my team, we're a bunch of gangsters, bro. Why don't you just come and join us? Because we're the best. Instead, they have to sing because singing is great. We're not rude. We're not mean. We're just money, honey. We're the green machine. <laughs> Let's just say, though, in a nutshell, Sean is not impressed by, by, I almost said Kermit, because Sean's face looks like Kermit inside this shot. He is not impressed by Will. So you get like an eight minute compilation. I'm just sitting there watching for eight minutes people sing and play sports. It's just... It's kind of like, it does it need to be eight minutes? And then there's a cameo by Stephen Curtis Chapman, who added a song or two in this film. Amy Grant, who had a song in this film. So this eight minute culminates in, I think, the most overdramatic game of dodgeball I've ever seen. I love his run cycle. <laughs> And of course, George has to go see her, but he's too scared. But he proceeds to hallucinate and, and have this whole dr dream sequence about singing love songs to her. It's it's like such a wonky scene, but you know what? It's low key hilarious. And it doesn't happen until he proceeds to get all spiffed up by Will. Now go get the girl. Bro, I can be just as cool. Look, check this out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, why is it so hard? 
These are sturdier than I thought they'd be! Close enough. Swag, yeah. I'm not gonna lie, this whole section of the movie, this is actually comedic gold. After this, we have one of the few actual serious and deep scenes in the movie. Will and Avery actually run into each other outside of sports hours and actually have a meaningful heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Avery shares a little bit about her mother's death and a little bit about her life, and they have some genuine dialogue. Honestly, I wish there were more scenes like this in the film, because this is where you get the real material and the real emotional moments from, and I feel like most of the movie is just trying too hard to just be goofy and entertaining and fun that they miss a lot of opportunities to put in scenes like this. This was a really good moment of the film and it really developed the characters. Ooh, oops, wrong, sorry, wrong, wrong movie. And then after this, yay! Another eight minutes of sports, woo! Seriously, like these compilations get kind of old after kind of a while. <laughs> I look, you just want to take the music from this scene and just put it over the saddest scene of any movie I've ever watched and just ruin the scene. So that night, the whole group comes again. I don't even know how many days in the camp it is at this point. It might be 20 out of seven. I mean, that's, I'm good at math. At this point, it might be. They all come around the campfire again, have a really cool scene where they ch chat a little bit. I don't know all of you. Certainly not as well as I'd like to. And I like less than half of you half as well as you deserve. Uh, not a wrong movie again! But they actually sing a really cool song. They really, at first it sounds like pentatonics. I will give this movie props. They have some top-notch musical performance inside of it. Most of the songs I actually genuinely liked. It's just you don't have to do five-minute compilations of them. But this scene was actually some really nice music. And it was yet yeah, another one of those really deep and emotional moments of the film. I just, I, I wanted you to have this photo. Avery, I... Yeah, you can go now. But finally, after what feels like an endless compilation of just sports and watching people just mosey around the camp, the film finally seems to step to an actual story structure and it actually gets really good at this point, beginning to climax. Sean finds out about Will's stormy past and is going to... He digs up all the dirt on him, and he's, he basically threatens Will. You're just a big fraud. And you need to tell Avery. Or I'm going to. Will becomes upset about this, obviously. Like, he's been through so much in his life, it doesn't take much to kind of push him over the edge. Knowing that the, the gig's kind of up for him, he decides to just leave the camp and run away. He's, you know, he's probably done that so many times in his life. Avery decides to go after him to try to find him and talk him out of running away and talk him into coming back. Will, unfortunately, just isn't hearing it. Is that you? Is that, is that you know, the real I, Will? I don't have anybody, Avery. Okay, I don't have a dad to take care of me or a little magical garden. Th that was unnecessary. That was over the top. You're being a jerk, bro. So uh, Avery leaves, and of course, because this is a great happy ending Christian movie, he changes his mind. I love how he changed. All he has to do to change his mind is just sing a song, and halfway through singing the song, he's just like, "Oh, everything's good now. I'm gonna go back." Like, wow, that was a really deep moment. Real life change. Now, now I know that. In order to completely change somebody's life, all I have to do is just make them sing a song. Wait, so I just, 22 miles per hour speed limit? Is that actually a thing? Like, I promise I've never seen that before. So, Will eventually comes back 
And happy ending. You know, I'm just going to cut off my description of the movie because he wants you guys to enjoy the ending for yourself. So what are my thoughts on the film? I mean, low-key, this is actually a pretty hilarious film in parts. It's genuinely entertaining. I feel like Will kind of is missing a lot of personality. He's charming in some parts, but, like, the dialogue is very basic in this film. And there's not a lot of deep moments. I feel like Will needed a little more personality to carry the weight of this film. Not Nothing against the actor, it's just the dialogue that he was given. And I really feel like this film suffered from trying too hard for light-hearted, happy moments versus actually focusing on what Will was going through in emotionally there's so there were so many sports and music compilations that i feel like it didn't have enough time to emotionally develop the story and so there were very few scenes that actually touched on deep topics i feel like it really suffered because of that and came off to me as a very shallow film well that said it's enjoyable it's definitely a watchable film one of the most like well-made christian films i've seen in a while there's no profound message in it this is obviously on netflix they're not going to let them talk about anything the slightest bit controversial but i think they managed to on a very secular platform not compromise the Christian message in a way that I think they did a very good job and I would commend everyone who was involved with this project. So with that said, thank you guys for watching this video. Don't be a stranger. We hope to see you soon. Watch more of my videos, okay? With that, I will cut my camera. What? Ah! Ah!